Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Earlier this week, Rishi Sunak announced a £4.2 billion contract to build five Type 26 frigates on the Clyde. This is a decision that will protect and strengthen our Scottish shipbuilding industry. Yeah. Uh, the UK Government contract will support 1,700 jobs at Govan and Scotston alone, with a further 2,300 jobs in the wider supply chain. So will the First Minister join me in wholeheartedly welcoming this huge investment in Scottish jobs and our economy by the UK Government? Yeah. First Minister. Well, yes, I, I, I do welcome this announcement and I welcome the recognition of the skills and the talent and the expertise on the River Clyde. Um, of course, while these are responsibilities that continue to lie in the hands of the UK Government, uh, albeit with Scottish taxpayers contributing to the cost of them, then it is absolutely vital that Scotland benefits fully. Uh, so, yes, I do welcome the decision. I would also take the opportunity to congratulate BAE. Uh, I've campaigned uh, over many years for the future of Govan Shipyard, which used to be in my constituency, is now in the constituency of Hamza Yusuf. Uh, but while I do, of course, uh, welcome the award of this contract, uh, I'm duty-bound to note that the original proposal uh, back in 2010 uh, was not for five uh, new vessels, it was actually for 13 uh, new vessels. And it was said then that all of that work uh, would be undertaken on the Clyde. Uh, so let, yes, let's welcome it, but let's not uh, rewrite history in the process. Douglas Ross. Well, I'll, I'll take that as being about as good as it gets for the First Minister supporting decisions by the UK Government, because this is a massive boost to Scottish shipbuilding and is only possible because we are part of the United Kingdom. Uh, well, well, they don't like it, but an investment of this scale in engineering and manufacturing jobs would not be possible if the SNP got their way. If the Nationalists ever managed to separate Scotland from the rest of the United Kingdom, these Royal Navy ships would almost certainly be built elsewhere and the highly skilled Scottish jobs lost. And don't just take our word for it. Earlier this week, we heard from Keith Hartley, a professor of economics and a defence expert. He's advised the United Nations, the European Commission and the European Defence Agency. He said, and I quote, I don't see a future for a Scottish warship building industry in an independent Scotland. Yeah. First Minister, he's right, isn't he? First Minister. Before I go into the detail of that, let me just make the general point that I've made in this chamber before. Uh, if Douglas Ross wants to have a debate um, about the benefits, uh, or as he would see it otherwise, uh, of independence, then I really welcome that. Let's have that debate, and then let's the, let the people of Scotland decide the outcome in a referendum. And if Douglas Ross was really confident in his arguments, then he'd have the courage to have this debate, not just in the safety of the parliamentary debating chamber, but out there in towns and villages and communities all over Scotland. Now, I do believe that the expertise and the skills of our shipbuilders on the River Clyde uh, are world class. Uh, and I believe they would compete successfully for work uh, across the world, uh, regardless of the constitutional future of Scotland. That's the confidence I have in our shipbuilding industry. Of course, an independent, and, and uh, before Douglas Ross uh, tries to argue against that, of course, uh, some of the work that was announced uh, this week for Holland and Wolfe, for example, uh, the UK government at one point intended to hand all of that overseas and compete the contract internationally. Uh, so the point is kind of made. Uh, on, on that matter. But of course, an independent Scotland, like independent countries all over the world, and an independent Scotland as a full member of NATO, would have naval capabilities of its own, capabilities that can and would be served and improved upon by our world-renowned shipbuilding industry and expertise. Uh, the difference between me and Douglas Ross is I have confidence yep. in our industry in all circumstances. He clearly doesn't. <laughs> Douglas Ross. So, who should the public trust on the economics of shipbuilding? A First Minister who can't build a single ferry for £250 million 
or a defence expert who's advised the United Nations. Of course, the First Minister has to deny the facts because the independence movement is sinking. It's absolutely sinking. She is up Separation Creek without a paddle. And we know that there wouldn't be any major ships built if she got her way. Because look at her, her own appalling record on failing to build essential ferries for Scotland's island communities. The UK government has delivered seven ships here in Scotland during her time as First Minister. Over the same period, how many have the SNP Scottish Government delivered? First Minister. Well, Douglas Ross regularly, and uh, let me say rightly, challenges me on the delay to the delivery of the ferries, but he should perhaps be careful what uh, he wishes for in terms of the exchange we're having today, because of course the vessels uh, that he is lauding today, and I have welcomed uh, the announcements around, uh, back in 2013 the UK Government said that the first of these vessels would come into service around 2020. Earlier this month it was reported that the first Type 26 wouldn't come into service until October 2028, oh. eight years after the proposed date. Members, so there we go on. Members, there we go on timescale. Members, let, let's hear one another, please. Yeah. Let's Thank turn. You. Let's turn to costs because the defence secretary, uh, Ben Wallace, has also said this in costs that over the lifetime of the programme, uh, the cost would be 233 million more than forecast. So perhaps uh, Douglas Ross should turn some of these questions to his colleagues south of the border if he wants to come here and make a big issue of these things in this chamber. But two final points, presiding officer. Uh, firstly, firstly, if Douglas Ross, I've just answered the question. He ans asked me about delays and costs, Thank and I you. think I've just answered his question pretty fully. Uh, but two final points, presiding officer. If Douglas Ross really believed what he has just said about Scotland's independence movement, he would be desperate for an independence yeah. referendum. The fact that he running is running scared. scared of an independence referendum, I think, proves him wrong. And secondly, presiding officer, while I do uh, welcome these announcements for the Clyde this week, the fact is that most people across Scotland uh, right now, and indeed the UK, who are watching television, uh, will be watching the Chancellor on his feet in the House of Commons announce significant, deep, real terms cuts and tax rises. Uh, that's the price of Tory government, and that's why an increasing number of people in Scotland want this country to be independent. <laughs> Douglas Ross. Anyone watching the Chancellor's Thank you. Anyone watching the Chancellor's autumn statement will look at what that is delivering, rather than the narrative from the from the fibbing First Minister who has been caught out so many times because the narrative from the Chancellor today is a UK government that is increasing benefits and pensions in line with inflation, that is increasing spending on health and on education, that is delivering £1.5 billion of extra support to Scotland and is investing in the future of our economy. And the First Minister had a very, very long narrative but zero answer. That's what I'm desperate for in here, is finally an answer from Nicola Sturgeon. But the reason she didn't answer is because her government, in the same time that the UK government has delivered seven warships, has delivered one ferry. Seven warships compared to one ferry. And now the UK government will build another five frigates here in Scotland, but we don't know when the SNP will actually deliver and complete a ferry. Their failure is having a real impact on people and the livelihoods right across Scotland. Almost, yes, really, Cabinet Secretary. Members. Yes, Cabinet Secretary. Because almost half Members, of all Members, excuse me. I'm simply not having members shouting at one another across the aisles. Can we please hear one another when we're speaking? The, the Cabinet Secretary is not just shouting at me. She is shouting at the island communities who are crying out for support from this First Minister and this Government. Because before I was interrupted by the Cabinet Secretary, I was going to say half, half 
of Highlands and Islands businesses said that ferry cancellations are posing a risk to their future. Yeah. And just this week, we have heard from Islanders who are again enduring food shortages. The First Minister might not want to admit that her shipbuilding record has sunk the case for independence, but will she at least accept that her government's failure to replace lifeline ferries is doing massive damage to our island communities? First Minister. Uh, yes, I have said on many occasions that the impact on our island communities of the delays to the ferries is deeply regrettable, which is why the government uh, with Ferguson Shipyard is focused so much and so hard on delivering uh, these ferries. But Douglas Ross comes here um, and lauds uh, five uh, Type 26 frigates, and you know, he is uh, right to do so. I've welcomed that announcement, but tries to make a comparison with ferries. I think he probably, before doing so, should have reflected on the fact that the first of these Type 26 vessels will come into service eight years after it was planned to do so, and at a significant cost overrun. So if he wants to trade these things, then he should at least understand the facts uh, that he's basing his argument uh, on. Um, and secondly, presiding officer, you know, I've already uh, talked about the impact on our island communities, and I, I repeat that. But what is having a significant impact on the lives and the livelihoods of people across Scotland is what the Chancellor of the Exchequer is currently setting out in the House of Commons. Uh, if Douglas Ross wants to talk about interruption to food supplies, for example, across the whole of the UK caused by Brexit, uh, then perhaps we might focus on that. Or the £55 billion black hole uh, at the heart of UK finances, largely caused by a combination of Brexit and Tory economic mismanagement that the Chancellor has just said has been filled uh, by tax rises and spending cuts, more than half of it by spending cuts. So budgets for this government set at a time when inflation was 3%, now being eroded by inflation at more than 10%. That is having a devastating impact on people, on businesses, on public services across our country. And when Briefly, we consider all of that, presiding officer, it is no wonder at all that Douglas Ross did not want to come to this chamber and talk about any of the harm the Conservatives are doing to people across Scotland.